Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited because today I'm going to talk about the my favorite books that I read in 2023. I read quite a few books in 2023 and I have a couple that I think are just like amazing and just really mattered a lot this year. So I wanted to share them with you. I've got a couple different categories. I've got my non-fic category, which includes one memoir and two psychology, kind of sociology books, I guess. Then we've got witchy slash spirituality, which I have six books. And then fiction, which I have five, which is like the most fiction I've ever read <laughs> um, in one year. So we love that. Okay, so I wanted to share these with you. I hope you all enjoy. Um, grab a little cozy drink and a blankie and let's just get cozy and talk about books. usually do witchy glam girly things but I'm also really big into books and yeah I like talking about books I used to work at a bookstore and I spent so much money there and I miss it every day it was a used bookstore it was amazing okay so let's start with the non-fic books um okay so I read the first non-fic book I read this year that was like not witchy or spirituality was Burnout by Emily Nagowski and I love this book. I really like books that kind of give me like some facts about why like toxic productivity is toxic and how to watch out for those signs because it's so easy to be like, oh, I need a break, I need a break. But then you kind of like talk yourself out of it. And when you have like facts to back you up of like, yo, I need to take a break or else I'm really gonna get burnt out because those, 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 you know, like I think that's really helpful for me in particular. Um, it, I think it gives me a lot of validation about like what I'm feeling is valid and important and I need to take care of myself because I am definitely the kind of person who, I mean, like I love my work and so I just could do it forever, but also like I do my work, I hold space for a lot of people in my readings, I hold space for the people in my life, and I tend to like give, give, give a lot, and mm, I tend to burn out a lot too. So this book was really good for me, just helping me to see the signs of burnout, what causes burnout, a lot about stress and stressors and the stressors that you can deal with and the stressors that you can't deal with and how, or the, the stressors that you can't change and how to like manage that. Um, and I, I just thought it was super good. Um, and also she talks a lot about like why women in particular generally burn out more and it makes a lot of sense when you read it. And I think it's just really fascinating. And so that was a really, really good book for me this year. And I just really liked it. Next, I read The Art of Seduction. And to be fair, you guys, this book took me a literal year to finish like because I would take so many breaks because it was so dense okay this book the margins were so like literally non-existent <laughs> the book I swear to god guys the font was so small it was so dense and you know it was just more dense than I'm used to so it took me a long time okay so uh yeah it was it was a it was a doozy to get through but I also really wanted to make sure I fully understood the concept so I was taking my time with it in that way too realizing my squish guy it's all messed up there you go there you go okay now we can continue and it was just so fascinating it was so 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 fascinating I was so into it and Essentially, this book is all about the art of seduction, like what it is, how it matters in psychology, like what's going on, why we're attracted to certain things, why sometimes we get seduced by the same kind of people. Um, and I just think it's really interesting. I noticed when I was an exotic dancer, like there were specific, like you kind of have a persona when you're dancing. And there were like specific type of people I would attract with this persona. And I always thought that was so interesting. And then like my friends would attract different kinds of people and it was kind of like a 
a kind of like a joke about like why that happened and so this book was really interesting and in like explaining I guess why that happens and how to utilize that and I also think what's really fascinating about this book is it can help you to not get seduced by people who are just trying to seduce you you know what I'm saying so I thought that was super interesting and I just love, I love knowing those kind of things. I love it. Okay, and then the memoir I read, of course, was Britney Spears, The Woman and Me. And I thought it was so good. And I thought it was just so necessary. It was so sad and it was just, yeah, it was just sad. And I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't even know if I have words. <laughs> it was, I'm really in like a memoir era right now. I'm really interested in memoirs and it was just, it was sad, but it was like really good and really hopeful. And it was really interesting to read about her experience in the entertainment industry and also like the conservatorship. And I just think that it feels good because for someone who had like no rights over their existence for so long, like I was thinking, I think she was like 25 when she went into her conservatorship, which is how old I am. And I was just, I mean, she's 40 now and I'm like, I can't even imagine, I mean, being in some, like, essentially a prison until I'm 40, like, oh, that just sounds crazy. And so, I don't know, dude, it was crazy, it was wild. And it's just sad the way that, you know, society treated her. And anyway, I'm not gonna talk for her because it was a great book and I think you should read it. It was a super easy read, super fascinating. And I thought it was really well written. Um, it was really good. Okay, I'm gonna move into the witchy and spirituality section. Um, so the first book I read was Financial Sorcery by Jason Miller. And I actually read this in my book club. So just like a real quick hype, if y'all want to join a witchy and spiritual book club online, um, join my Patreon because we have it in the Empress and the Star tier, which is the 10 and the $20 tier. Um, and essentially every new Zodiac season, I put together, I compile a list of like five books that have to do with the energy of the Zodiac season. And this was our Capricorn book club last year. And, uh, and then y'all vote and then, you know, we read it over the course of that Zodiac season. So that month we read it and we meet uh, twice on like a discussion board and twice on Zoom just to chat and hang out about it. Um, and it's really fun. So I'll leave that link below if you wanna join. But Financial Sorcery by Jason Miller, super good. One of those like staple books for like an intermediate witch, I feel like. Um, you know, it's not like the fun and pretty beginner witch stuff that we love, but it was really good information and it's stuff that I still continuously go to. It's one of those books I keep at my altar to constantly reference. So I just think it's a really, really good book for money magic, abundance work, anything like that. It seems like a really good, just, you kind of just need this book and then you're pretty set. Next, I read Harmony Nice's Heart Magic and this book is so sweet. This book is essentially all about taking care of yourself and self-love. Um, she comes from kind of like a Wiccan place for this book, so, um, but I think you can really tailor it to whatever, like, spiritual path you're on, because I think so many of the rituals and stuff, I mean, they can totally be tailored to, like, your specific pursuit of spirituality, and it's so good. It was really, really good and sweet, and I've already, like, referenced it multiple times. I just think it's a really good book, and... It's just, if the energy already just feels so sweet in it. So like anytime I'm feeling like, you know, burnt out and stressed and I just like need a pick me up, like that book has everything. It's so good. And I don't feel like the spells or anything um, are overwhelming, which I feel like is super necessary when you're in kind of like a bad place and you just need some more self-love. Um, I really loved it. It was a really good book and now I want to read it again. Next, I read Discover Your Dharma by Sahara Rose, and I really loved this book. This book is essentially about discovering your dharma, so it's about discovering your life's purpose, uh, your mission, kind of what you want to do with your life, and specifically what I really liked about this book was it wasn't trying to get you to choose like a career path or one specific thing that you're gonna do with your life and that's your purpose, you know? And I think I have felt very constricted by that sort of 
you know, like thought process that I think is pretty prevalent in our society. And I was really happy with like the, the quizzes in there and the prompts and the meditations that led me to kind of like really put my purpose into words. And I don't think it was something that was like surprising to me. I think that, um, you know, I think we know kind of like what we want to do with our lives. But for me, I ended up being able to say like, okay, my purpose is to create, to entertain, to make art, to make beauty that makes other people feel and to feel good and to feel seen and validated. And like, that makes a lot of sense when you know, like I do, like I'm an actress, I do YouTube, like I, I make apothecary items, I make art, like all this stuff, like it does, it's just kind of a continuous thread throughout everything I do. And that to me takes a lot of pressure off because it's like, okay, I don't need to be successful at this one thing for because that's not my purpose my purpose isn't to be a famous actress you know it's just to create and to make people feel so even if this is all i ever do like i have made people feel i have created um and i think that's more empowering to me and also gives me more flexibility you know even if i i don't know you know go back to working at a bookstore or like a coffee shop or something like that is totally fine because i can continue to create and to make art and to entertain people even if it's just like an interpersonal relationships i just make people laugh or i do little skits for my friends like you know things like that and i think so it was just helpful for taking the pressure off helping me get clear about you know putting my purpose into a statement and i think that's just really nice because i can constantly go back to that and make sure that that's like my north star i'm always aligned with that i had my husband read that book and it is funny because i do think it is geared towards like spiritual like millennial women and so <laughs> i think it was just really funny having him read it like i think if you uh like i think even for me like i don't know i think it had and i don't mean this in any like negative way at all but I think there is this like millennial like speak that a lot of authors do, like millennial self-help authors, where they're always like adding hashtags. Like they think that's the best thing. That's like the coolest thing. And it's just so funny because it's like, oh, I can tell exactly. Like <laughs> it's always like hashtag girl power or hashtag no thank you. And it just it's just really funny to me. And it's totally fine. I, I just think it's like super funny. And so my husband was like, what? <laughs> like a couple of times. And I was like, yeah, no, I think you're probably not the target audience, but I think you can still get something good out of this. And I say that to you now, you know, even if you're not the target audience, I think that you can still enjoy the book. And yeah, the next book I read was Magic of Birthdays by Hannah Hawthorne, who I love. And um this book was so fun this was also in my book club and we did this in march which is my birth month so it was really nice to have that like around that time for me um and yeah essentially it's all about magic of birthdays and i really loved everything about it it was so fascinating and i don't think there's i mean i've never seen a book like really written about this and the way she wrote about it and i thought that was amazing and there was like some really fun spells to do on your on your birthday or at the start of your zodiac season and had a lot of fun history about like birthdays and why we celebrate birthdays and stuff like that and it's just such a unique book it was a really easy read and it was really fun and it just like i think gave me some really fun witchy things to do on and around my birthday that i really excited about. Next, I read Bewitching the Elements by Gabriella Hurstic and it quickly became a fave. I really, really love all her books and um, it was just so good. It, it's such an amazing book because it talks about each of the five elements in um, like witchy spirituality. So we got earth, air, water, fire, and spirit, um, all the elements that make up the pentacle. So she goes in about each of the elements, what they mean, um, I believe she connects them to a goddess. I might be confusing that with another one of her books, but I'm pretty sure she connects it to a goddess. She gives you journal prompts. She gives you, I'm pretty sure like tarot prompts um, and like a good, a good bit of information about how to connect to that element, which I think is super beneficial because I look at my astrology chart and I'm not a very balanced person in terms, 
and ele elementally speaking, you know, it's a uh, very fire and air um, dominated with a, a good bit of water too, but not a lot of earth. Like, I don't think I have any earth. I don't have any earth at all except for my ascendant and my north node. So really not that much, like, you know, so I really lack a lot of that earth element. So it's something I have to really mindfully uh, incorporate into my life so that I don't get burnt out and I don't go too hard in the fire and like getting too much in my head with the air and stuff like that. Um, and I really just love that I can flip to the earth section and just refresh myself, get myself inspired, get myself connected to the earth element, have a meditation, have, you know, all these different ideas of connecting to this element to just get me grounded. You know what I'm saying? And so I think it's really a really, really great book for witches of all, um, you know, levels. And yeah, I love it. It's another great reference book too. Okay, the last witchy slash spiritual book I read was Protection and Reversal Magic, again by Jason Miller. We love him. Um, this book was really good. I really liked, again, it was kind of like financial sorcery where it's just, it is full of information and it's a great book to come back to. Like, I don't think it's like a one and done, you read it, you're good. It's it's a book you wanna come back to. And I think as with financial sorcery, um, it's a great thing to kind of use as like a reference book because it covers so much about the topic and you don't really need to get a ton more books about the same subject. Like, I think it's a really comprehensive book about protection and reversal magic. So I really, really, really enjoyed it. It's one of those ones where it's like, I'm not like, oh my God, that was so fun, but rather like, hey, that was good. Like, that's a good practical book to have, if that makes sense. So those were my favorite witchy slash spiritual books of 2023. Let's talk about fiction, because this is where my favorite book of the year comes from, okay? And those of you who probably, those of you who follow me on Instagram already know exactly what I'm talking about. So, okay, the first um, fiction book I read this year was Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse-Five, and I made, I tried to make a point to read more fiction recently. And for a while I was really wanting to read like the classics. I think partially because my husband and some friends of mine like really read classics growing up and I just didn't have that in the school that I went to. Um, and so I felt like kind of like, damn, I can't relate in any of these conversations. So. I, I read like some Hemingway last year. I read Albert Camus, which was, I read The Stranger by Albert Camus, not last year, but like 2022. And it was a lot, it was a lot. But anyway, I did like Hemingway. But anyway, all this to say, so I've been trying to read more classics and find like classics that I enjoy. Um, and so I read Slaughterhouse-Five and I really liked it. It was really fun. Um, it was really weird and funky, which I liked, and I thought kind of ahead of its time in that way. Um, I thought it took a very, it had a really nice like anti-war message talking about like the effects of war and also how, uh, I don't know, I just think how like they're not always like seen or validated, I guess. Um, and then there's also like a, it's hard to say without, I don't wanna spoil anything obviously, but like, there's just some funky, weird stuff about the book and I really liked it. And it's kind of like a unreliable narrator sort of situation where it's like, you don't know if he's just crazy or maybe this stuff happened. And I don't think Vonnegut like gives you a yes or no. I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, this is the story, who knows what happened. And I love that because it's like, hell yeah. You know, <laughs> I just think it was really good. And yeah, so I liked some of the sort of like, weirder, spookier aspects of it. And for a while, I would have said this was my favorite fiction book. But then I decided to reread The Great Gatsby because I read it in high school. That's the one classic book I read in high school and I loved it. And I remember loving it so much. And so for a while I was like, damn, do I really like that book? Like I need to go back and read it and see if, if it stands the test of time. And so I read it again to see if I still liked it so much. And I, I didn't like it, but I think the reason it's on this list is not because it's a like groundbreaking book, but rather like I did still like it and I, I saw so many new things reading it at 25, 
you know, 10 years after I read it the first time, you know, it talks a lot about class issues and class struggles. And I thought that was like, like I, I didn't realize that when I was 15, probably because I didn't know anything about money or, or classism and stuff like that. And so seeing, I mean, it, the book really does talk a lot about class struggles and things like that. And also love, of course, but I don't think it's like, it's not a love story. And I think it gets kind of told as a love story, but I think it more so is about, um, kind of how like the wealthy can just get away with anything and kind of like ruin people's lives and then just like move on and stuff like that. And um, I, I thought that was really, really interesting. And again, I just didn't, I don't think I connected that when I was like a teenager because I didn't have a bank account. I didn't know anything about money, right? But I, I really enjoyed like getting to read it a second time with new eyes and that's why it's on my list. Okay, next. Another fiction book that I really loved is Bloodborne by Stephanie Kemmler. Love Stephanie, what's up? Oh my God, I hope she's watching. Um, Stephanie is one of my clients and I would say friends. Um, and she sent me her book to read and you guys, it is so fun. It is like a, let me think how to explain it. It's like a vampire romance, a little spicy, but also like kind of thrillery at times. And I mean, it's just one of those good vampire romances, right? And I really liked it. And she has a second one that I'm gonna read this year um, called Blood Mad. And I am, yeah, I just really, really liked the story. It was chaotic, it was fun, it was a little spicy at times. And I love a good, like, I think it has like some family drama sort of energy too, which I really liked. Um, and I just, I mean, I read it in uh, like October, November time, so it was like the perfect time for a good vampire read. And I just like love that kind of stuff. So I really, really enjoyed that book. My final two books of the year. These are my favorite books of the year. These took me in a chokehold. These took me out of the depression I have been in for the past fucking years and made me feel alive again. It made me feel whole. You ever have those books where it's like, I don't know, dude, they straight up became a coping mechanism. Like they really did. Okay. And y'all might call me basic and that's fine. It's fine. But I finally read A Court of Thorns and Roses. Okay. As you can see right here by my bedside, I'm reading A Court of Mist and Fury actively. And I went ahead and bought A Court of Silver Flames to read because I figured I would finish A Court of uh, what is that? Did I say Mist and Fury? That's not even Frost and Starlight. Okay. I'm on 3.5 right now. And I knew I would finish it super quickly because, um, cause it's very small. Um, but in, oh my God, my hair, you guys in December, I read a court of thorns and roses and a court of mist and fury. And like two days ago, I just finished a court of, oh, wings and ruin, but we're only talking about 2023. So, my one of my best friends maddie has been begging me to read a court of thorns and roses for a very long time and so i finally read it and i had expected it to just be pure smut i don't know what was wrong i don't know i really thought it was just gonna be pure smut and i was so down for that i was ready i was like let's go let's go and so you know i i just didn't yeah i i didn't think there was gonna be a plot i, I didn't like I thought everyone was hyping it just cause it was good and sexy. You know what I'm saying? So I was ready for that. But then, uh, wow. Um, let's just talk about a court of thorns and roses first. No spoilers, of course. Um, I mean like I texted my friend and I was like, I didn't know I was gonna cry. I didn't know I was gonna feel love. I thought this was just gonna be sexy. And so it really, the plot is crazy, you guys. The plot is crazy. And again, I could totally be basic. I really don't read a lot of fiction. I don't read a lot of fantasy. Like this was my first year reading fantasy. I never read Harry Potter. I, I never even read Twilight growing up. Um, and, and so it could just be that I'm a baby and this is the first fantasy series I've read. And you know, just, just, I don't know anything about anything, but I really loved it. And I didn't know I was gonna feel so many emotions and like the end of Court of Thorns and Roses, 
y'all the end of court of thorns and roses oh my god i didn't know how crazy it was gonna be and so that book was crazy and then so i immediately read a court of mist and fury which if you thought <laughs> if you thought a court of thorns and roses was crazy read a court of mist and fury and report back to me so obviously i loved that book and i i am not gonna say much because i don't want to spoil it i am so thankful that these books haven't been spoiled for me and i got to experience it for the first time not knowing at all what was gonna happen um or even what the plot was like i literally went into the se series knowing it's a spicy retelling of beauty and the beast and that's what i was prepared for y'all so those of you who have read you know y'all know that this is it's, there's so much more and uh i've cried i've fallen in love i've had my heart broken <laughs> like this series has been so crazy and so like i said now i'm on a court of frost and starlight reading that i know a lot of people don't love it but i'm still gonna read it because i feel like after the first three books i could use a break from the action and just have something silly and cute because again i'm not used to reading fantasy so the amount of action and crazy shit and heartbreak and romance and everything that's gone on like my little heart was not prepared so yeah but it was so amazing oh my god and so yes my favorite um book of the year i, I don't know if it'd be a court of thorns and roses or a court of mist and fury <sighs> like i think a court of thorns and roses was so special for me because it was like my first uh fantasy book first romanticy book well, I guess I read A Touch of Darkness in 2022, and that was like romanticy kind of. Um, but like, yeah, it was just, Court of Thorns and Roses just really surprised me. And I think that surprise factor was part of why I loved it so much. Because like I said, I really wasn't expecting anything more than just a little spice, a little something to take the edge off, you know? And so when it became this like absolute roller coaster of emotions, I was taken by storm. And but of course, of course, A Court of Mist and Fury is like amazing on so many levels. And yeah, so I don't know. I don't know. They're both amazing. I'm not going to choose between them, but those two books were my favorite and I absolutely fell in love with the series. Yeah, I'm obsessed. No spoilers in the comments, please. I will delete them. I will. No, I don't put up with it. No spoilers in the comments. Um, but yeah, uh, those are my favorite books of the year. If you haven't read A Court of Thorns and Roses, freaking read it, okay? A Court of Thorns and Roses, that's that's my homework for you. Read it, have a good time, report back to me. Uh, you can hang out with me in my DMs. I love hanging out in the DMs. Um, so you can find me on Instagram at Luna the Glam Witch. And yeah, that's all for this year. I think I ended up reading like 32 books in total, but these were just my favorites. Um, the ones that really I felt like I really remembered, I really enjoyed, I'd recommend. And uh, let me know in the comments what your favorite book of the year was. And I mean, you can even do your top couple of favorite books if you want. But yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Cheers to a year of romanticy. That is my goal. 2024 is the year of romanticy for me. So leave the recommendations in the comments and I will read them once I'm finished with The Court of Thorns and Roses. Okay, love you all so much. Thank you for hanging out, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!